Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module entitled Part 2 of the Right Upper Quadrant View of the Trauma Fast Exam, we're going to focus entirely on positive findings from this view. Hopefully you've had a chance to join me prior for Part 1 of the Right Upper Quadrant View of the Trauma Fast Exam, where we focused entirely on normal findings from the Right Upper Quadrant. And hopefully you have a chance to join me back as we go through the left upper quadrant and suprapubic views of the trauma fast exam. So let's begin this module by going through a review of how to perform the right upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam. Remember that the probe is positioned in the long axis configuration with the marker dot superiorly and that we're going to place the probe in between the ribs at about the anterior axillary line. Here we want to focus on the three areas as I emphasized in part one of this module Number one, the infradiaphragmatic space, looking at that region just below the diaphragm and above the liver, and actually looking into the chest cavity for a hemothorax. Position two, which is the traditional Morrison's pouch or hepatorenal interface. And position three, to round out the exam, looking at the caudal liver tip, representing the beginning of the right paracolic gutter. Here's a nice illustration showing a positive examination from the right upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam. We see the liver smack in the middle of the image and the kidney slightly posterior and inferior to the liver. Let's look at the preferential deposition of fluid as shown here in the orange color and we see that it layers out predominantly around the caudal tip of the liver as shown towards the inferior edge of the image here. Notice that it flows from the caudal tip of the liver into that potential space which is Morrison's pouch in between the liver and the kidney. Now this is very important to emphasize as many times fresh fluid can only be seen around that caudal tip of the liver and then it will move into that hepatorenal interface or Morrison's pouch. Here's a positive ultrasound examination from a patient who was hit by a car while crossing the street. And we see here the liver smack in the middle of the image here. Notice the kidney located inferior and posterior to the liver. And in between the liver and the kidney in that potential space known as Morrison's pouch, we see a dark or anechoic fluid collection. Not insignificant, actually a pretty large stripe in this patient. This represents the positive examination or the presence of fresh fluid, in this case blood, within Morrison's pouch and notice that it layers out in between that liver and kidney. To emphasize the point that a complete right upper quadrant view includes looking at the caudal tip of the liver, let's examine this video clip from another trauma patient. If we look at the hepatorenal interface there, we fail to see the presence of any fluid, but as we move the probe inferiorly, we see that the caudal tip of the liver as shown right there is well outlined by fluid. And here we see the inferior pole of the kidney, the caudal tip of the liver extending above the kidney, and notice all the fresh fluid, both anterior and posterior to the caudal tip of the liver, making the point that this is a very important area to look for in the right upper quadrant exam. Here's a video clip from a patient who was stabbed with a really big knife to the epigastric region. And as we look at the right upper quadrant, we can actually see a linear liver laceration extending through the medial aspect of the liver. We also appreciate the presence of a large amount of fresh fluid, that dark or anechoic fluid collection, layering out posteriorly there to the liver and extending into Morrison's pouch, the hepatorenal interface. So as this patient had unstable hemodynamics, the next move was to package for the operating room. And here we can actually see the caudal tip of the liver waving around in all the fresh fluid, in this case blood. And I obtained this view by moving the probe one intercostal space inferior from the last view to well delineate that caudal tip of the liver, which we can see here moving around in all the fresh fluid. In the last few video clips, the appearance of fresh fluid on bedside sonography was dark or anechoic. However, as blood clots, it can take on a more echogenic or lighter appearance. In this video clip, a patient was stabbed and had a significant downtime before being brought to the emergency department. As we look at the hepatorenal interface, we see a large amount of, of clotted blood there, made up by that echogenic or lighter appearance of the blood there. Notice that the large amount of blood extends into the right paracolic gutter as we scan inferiorly. And here we can see the liver, the kidney, and the clotted blood, that more echogenic or lighter blood in Morrison's pouch. So in conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you this part two module on the right upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam. I hope now you have a better understanding on how to perform a complete exam looking into the three areas as we discussed, infradiaphragmatic, Morrison's pouch, and inferior tip of the liver. And hopefully now you'll be able to discern the presence of fresh blood versus clotted blood on bedside sonography. 
So I hope to see you back as Sano Access continues and as we move further through the other views of the Trauma Fast Exam.